In this section, we're going to be focusing on staining our uh, specimen. And so your learning objective will be to differentiate the different types of dyes, um, the purpose of simple staining, and then the gram staining, the all-important gram staining. You need to know everything about it. The steps that are involved, why are we doing this, why it is such an important stain. So we're going to take a look at the gram stain. Um, we're going to also take a look at the acid fast stain and um, there's a couple more capsule stain endospore stain and flagella stain and um, this is part of this is a major portion of the reason why you have this kit that's going home with you you need this is very important knowledge every microbiology student the student needs to do a uh, gram staining you need to know the steps of the gram stain why it is so important and actually able to do it no, anyway, so we'll learn this. Okay, so let's take a look at um, just sort of the basics here of um, staining. Well, uh, we're dealing here, so we, we have now our microscopes. We have great um, magnification, we have good resolution. Now the problem is if you want to see something, you usually need to stain it so that you have some contrast. And um, a couple steps involved, so um, you need to um, for the staining, you need to have certain dyes that emphasize certain structures, and then they bring it out, and you have the contrast, and you can really see these structures. Now, the first thing you need to do in order to stain your specimen, you need to fix these microorganisms on a glass slide. And um, uh, smear preparations, that's actually fairly easily done. Um, all you have to do is go into, with, take a toothpick and go into your mouth and take a scraping off the inside of your cheek and then you get a cheek cell smear. When we have bacteria, and you're not going to have bacterial cultures going home, but um, you have plenty of bacteria in your mouth, uh, all you have to do is um, take a toothpick, scrape between your teeth and smear it across the slide and you've got plenty to look at. Uh, so, but if you add a lot of dyes, then these uh, and then you need to wash off the extra you need to be sure that you don't wash off your microorganisms so in order to prevent that we usually have to fix or attach these microorganisms to a slide so the way that is done is uh, usually we have we use a little, little bit of heat but we're gonna dry them onto the slide and that should be good enough um, Again, the whole big issue with the staining is that we need to have contrast. Because a lot of times these microorganisms, they don't have any kind of color to them. They might be even clear and transparent and you really don't see anything unless you stain what you want to look at. Okay, so we do need to prepare our um, bacteria or our specimen for staining. So we need to make a smear, then fix it. Usually by drying it should be enough. Um, if you add a little bit of heat, works better, but sometimes um, we can overdo it and then, it's, then you're basically frying your microorganisms, which would be not so good. Um, so then uh, we need to have stains, and so the color portion is called the chromophore. There are different types of stains. Um, in a basic dye, the chromophore is a cation, a positively charged um, ion. And then an acidic dye, the chromophore is an anion. So the staining, staining the background instead of the cell is called negative staining. And uh, that is done usually for capsular staining because capsules, uh, they are waxy and they don't pick up any kind of dye. So you're gonna stain everything except what you actually wanna look at. So then it pops out too, then you have negative staining. Okay, let's take a look at a simple stain. And it is simple as the name indicates. Uh, you're just gonna use a single basic dye and um, you need to still smear your organisms, um, dry them to fix them onto your slide, and you add that simple stain, uh, let it sit for a little while, and then you wash off the excess, and then um, you could usually can take a look at it. Sometimes you need to have a mordant um, to hold the stain um, in the specimen so it doesn't wash out, and we'll talk some more about that. 
uh, differential stains uh, it will be acid fast stain gram stain the most important one the acid fast stain is kind of hard to do but the gram stain is this must do kind of stain for every microbiology student so you got to do a gram stain as i said the acid fast stain is good too but um it's kind of hard to do we'll see how what we can do with that now let's take a look at the gram stain the gram stain has four distinct steps and um, the purpose of the gram stain is to classify bacteria into gram positive and gram negative ones and that distinguishes them based on their cell wall properties gram positive bacteria have thick peptidoglycan cell walls and gram negative uh, bacteria have thin peptidoglycan cell walls so what that means is that if you have gram positive bacteria they will pick up an initial dye for example crystal violet and uh, then we add a mordant usually to it so that uh, we kind of thicken this whole thing up a little bit but when you then <clears throat> when you're trying to wash out the um, crystal violet with alcohol and gram positive bacteria this thick peptidoglycan will not allow the crystal violet to leave the cell so the crystal violet is now stuck in those gram positive cells and these cells will show up purple dark purple like crystal violet purple now in gram negative bacteria what happens is the thin peptidoglycan is too thin to hold the crystal violet back and so it leaves if you're using alcohol to wash your cells then the crystal violet will leave the cells and they lose all their color and then you have to use a counter stain to add a little bit of color back but uh, let's take a look at the steps here so step number one you're going to add the purple dye the crystal violet okay so your cells all of the cells that are on your smear preparation are going to be dark purple after that step then you're going to add the mordant the iodine in this case and that only thickens up the crystal violet a little bit then the third step is the alcohol wash the decolorization so you want to now try to wash out the crystal violet and then depending on the cell wall properties you may or may not be able to do it in gram positive cells you cannot do it because the cell wall is too thick and the crystal violet stays and these guys retain the purple dye now the gram negative ones the crystal the um the cell wall the peptidoglycan is too thin of a layer and so all of the purple dye all of this crystal violet is going to leave and so they lose all of their color after the decolorization step so now the problem is if you were to stop here you wouldn't be able to see the gram negative bacteria so we're going to counter stain and that's our last step so we're going to apply safranin that's our counter stain and then our gram negative bacteria will be pink and the uh, gram positive ones will be purple as it is listed right here gram positive and these are the purple um, spots right there and the gram negative ones are these pink rods be sure that you know every bit of this slide the gram stain is super important must know okay so every step it's not that bad if you go over it a few times and we will be doing this and or at least attempt to do this in our uh, makeshift home labs i will try that but this is very important so if you did a good job then you should um, see if you have a mixture of bacteria you should see something like this you have your gram positive coxie right there so these are these little spots the caucus is the singular and coxie would be the plural here you have three little coxie uh, that are gram positive and then you have here your gram negative rods that's definitely gram negative right here those pink rods moving on to the acid fast stain the acid fast stain is used for to distinguish um, those bacteria that have mycolic acid in their cell wall and so 
uh, normally if you are um, regular bacteria without the mycolic acid, if you use acid alcohol to decolorize, then even gram-positive bacteria would decolorize, but not these guys. So we're using acid alcohol, not just alcohol, but we're adding acid on top of that. And these guys, these acid fast bacteria, they can still retain an initial dye even if you were washing them with acid alcohol. That's pretty amazing. Um, it's used for the identification of mycobacteria and also no cardia but a mycobacterium tuberculosis for example that's a good example for a bacterium that's acid fast it is very very difficult to treat with antibiotics and there's a lot of resistance to these are just tough guys with the with the mycolic acid in the cell wall it makes it just very difficult um, to to treat them effectively and um, they kind of tend to slow, slow, grow much slower than other bacteria, but still they're very difficult to treat. So somebody that has tuberculosis, it's usually a long-term kind of um, disease progression and it's difficult to treat and really get rid of. But let's take a look at that, the acid fast stain. So we're going to use a primary stain. This time it's carbol fusion. It's kind of a reddish um, stain. So the color of the acid fast will be red. Non-acid fast will also be red after the primary stain. And then we're going to use this decolorizing agent, which is acid alcohol. The acid fast bacteria will retain the red dye, but the non-acid fast bacteria will lose that dye and they have no color after that uh, acid alcohol bath and then we have a counter stain methyl one blue and uh, that will um, sort of counter stain these uh, non-acid fast bacteria will be blue so what it's going to look like so in red you're going to look at the mycobacteria these are acid fast so here we have mycobacterium bovis in red and then these blue coxy right there they will be non-acid fast in this type of stain Okay, now we have a few more stains, some special stains, capsule stain. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to try to do that, but uh, we definitely we have some malachite green, so we can try the endospore stain. And then uh, the flagella stain, and I usually don't even do that in the in on-site labs, but I doubt we'll do this in an at-home lab. So let's take a look at the um, capsule staining. It's a negative staining. That means you will stain everything except the capsules because they will be they, they don't pick up any kind of dye, and so you're better off staining everything else. And then the capsules will still be clear and shiny, and um, you can still you can see the capsules then. So they look like a little halo around the cell. So you can see here in this capsule staining. You've stained everything else. All the background is pink. The cell bodies are purple, but the um, the waxy capsule right here, that's right here, that's sort of this halo surrounding this bacterium right here, or this one too. You can see that really nice. It's a very nice capsular stain right here. So this white halo around the cells, that's the capsule, and it's a kind of a waxy capsule that doesn't like to pick up any kind of dye. The endospore stain is really cool. It's one of my favorite. Um, that one, um, many bacteria, they have sort of the survival spore that they can form when things are not good and conditions are bad for living conditions and you need to encapsulate and say, I'm going to wait for better times and see what happens later. Sometimes I wish we could do that, right? But anyway, so uh, many bacteria have this ability to form spores, a survival um, mechanism. And then if you want to demonstrate the presence of a spore, we typically use malachite green for the primary stain. And we do have malachite greens in the kits that we sent home with, to you. So um, we need to decolorize cells, water, and encounter stain with safran and, um, and the spores. If they've picked up the malachite green, they will appear in green, and then the cell bodies will be uh, pinkish with the safran. And so this is what it looks like when you have a good um, capsular, I'm sorry, endospore stain. So here would be your endospores in green these things and then the cell bodies um, they're in pink right there but this is clearly a spore forma what did you have here so a spore stain and then we have the flagella stain 
uh, that one you are staining flagella if they're present uh, typically you're using a mordant and carbofusion, fusion and this is what something like that might look like very pretty right here uh, the flagellum stained here the flagellum this here as flagella on both ends and you're staining it right there okay so what's important here by far the most important thing in this section right here on staining is you need to understand how you do a smear prep and then stain a slide by far the most important stain for microbiology students is a gram stain of course we're going to also try a simple stain and then we're going to try um, the spore stain and have to see uh, what else we have in the kits that we can do but the gram stain is a must do so make sure that you understand all the steps of the gram stain and why you are able to distinguish bacteria with a gram stain so you need to understand the cell wall properties and of course we're going to take a much closer look in another lecture to, um, into the cell wall properties of gram positives and gram negatives but for right now you need to understand there's a difference between thick and thin peptidoglycan layers in these bacterial cell walls and that makes all the difference in the world as to whether they can retain or not retain a crystal violet if you're washing the cells with alcohol so be sure that you understand the steps go over that several times because for sure you will be asked for the gram stain the procedure and everything surrounding it both in lecture and in lab so make it worth your while make sure that you know the gram stain